The Charlotte Coliseum, the Tar Heels, the Cavaliers in the tournament. The Tar Heels have won 8 of 11. Last year in the semis, Carolina won but lost Derek Phelps. He was unable able to play in the championship game. And Carolina lost to Georgia Tech. Underway with the 41st championship. And Virginia takes the opening tip. Cavaliers have defeated Maryland and Duke to advance to the title game. And the youngsters have let them. Dean and this man, Robinson. He misses the three and fell three bounds. North Carolina started in the man-to-man. -man. They're immediately going to run it down the court trying to get a basket in transition. And there they got it. That's exactly what Jeff Jones talked about before the game, that Virginia could not afford to let North Carolina get easy opportunities. Rashid Wallace, who had been starting in front of Salvadori, not in there today, late to this morning. So Salvadori gets the start ahead of Rashid. But no doubt Wallace will play and play a lot. Virginia's had success in this tournament by attacking the basket on the dribble. And Larry Rose says that Cornell Parker stepped out of bounds. Of course, Wallace on the Carolina bench had that monster game on Friday against Florida State with 16 rebounds and 17 points, saddled with foul difficulties yesterday against Wake Forest. Virginia opens in the zone defense. This is the way they opened the ball game yesterday against Duke. They had success in the early going with the defense. Got to find Donald Williams on the perimeter, and you got to make sure you cover up the big guys inside. That's a tremendous job to make Montrose kick the ball back out, and they force a turnover. Sometimes, Dan, that defense is tougher than a 50-cent stake for Virginia, but it's a tall order today because the, the Tar Heels have such an imposing front line, and, and getting them in the half-court game is one thing, trying to stop them is another. Well, you're absolutely right, Bob, but if you're going to beat North Carolina, they're going to try to attack you along the baseline, and you simply have to shut that off. And what North Carolina's doing is Virginia's not able to get all the way to the basket on the penetration. Parker hits the three. That's going to be critical. North Carolina's defense allowing Virginia to penetrate, but then forcing them to kick the ball back outside. Perimeter shooting, I think, is going to be very important for Virginia today. And a good sign, perhaps, for the Cavs. Parker, just a 24% three-point shooter. It's the first one. Here's a block by Burrow on Salvadori. Virginia's own reacting very, very well. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Williams runs it up and in. That's why he's such a dangerous player. And when he's healthy and playing well, it's one of the things that just elevates North Carolina to a, a level that I don't know that anybody can beat him when he's going to play like that. Dean, up and in. What upper body strength by Harold Dean. Does a great job maintaining his balance even once he gets in the air under defensive pressure. And Robinson with a steal. Reese takes it back, but Virginia will have it. Ryan carried it out of bounds. Mr. Excitement, Jamal Robinson. Has he been a story in this tournament or what? Just been amazing. The, he's really been the X factor for Virginia. No one figured that this young man from Jamaica would come in and, and New York would make such a tremendous impact on a team. But he's really turned things around for Virginia. Well, he's not only been the X factor, he's been a couple other letters too, because Virginia has really played well with him in the ball game. Burrow turns to fire. Now you're going to be able to get the ball in there some, and Burrow who struggled with his shooting yesterday is going to have to get hot from the inside if Virginia's going to pull the upset. Montrose fouled on his way to the basket. And there you talk again, Dan, about the Carolina baseline power. And that's, that's nothing but power right here. Montrose is going to catch the ball. Burrow cannot let him get that far underneath the basket. Now, there's the bump by Montrose. Enough, not really a very big bump, but when a 300-pound guy bumps you, you stay bumped generally, and Burrow just far enough off that he was not in a position to block the ball. Montrose floating in the foul shot. He was just one of eight at the line against Florida State. Came back yesterday to hit three of five against the Deacons. You can't let Montrose catch the ball anywhere in the colored area within three or four feet of the basket. You've got to push him out. And again, that's Cornell twice Parker's now out of bounds. stepped out, along, out of bounds. I've heard of pushing the limits, but the court limits are rather finite, and they're not going to expand or contract. A tie game at five.
Virginia stays in the zone. percent on the year so if you're North Carolina you have to figure you continue to play tough defensively Virginia's going to cool off and you raised the point before Virginia tends to have long scoring droughts and they absolutely can't afford one of those today if you're going to beat the Tar Heels you have to outscore them because they've got guys like that you know, Virginia shot 71 percent from the field and they're only ahead by one point and that defensive pressure from the Tar Heels is relentless that's a great move by Williford to dribble out of the double team. You get trapped down in there in the corner by Montrose and Salvador, you'll stay trapped. <laughs> Ten seconds it. of the shot clock. See Phelps point Parker toward the baseline. Robinson. Can he back out got again? a piece of it. Oh! Score the basket. That was a great offensive possession by Virginia. They avoided a couple of double team traps. And then even though the shot got blocked, they got an offensive rebound. And watch this. Stackhouse is going to get a hand on the ball. Look at the shot clock. We're down to four. The ball doesn't hit the rim. But there's Parker inside battling. That foul occurred with one second left on the shot clock. Yuri Barnes coming in now for Virginia. Chris Alexander is out. And Parker at the free throw line. He scored five. And a grand total of ten points in the first two games. And he buries the foul shot. And that's more typical of Virginia basketball, to shoot the ball and get it off the offensive boards. They're very effective in that particular category, and now they switch back to the man-to-man -man defense. This is the bread and butter of Virginia defense right here. Oh, yeah! Back out, yes! That young man is just so quick around the basket if he stays four years at North Carolina, he may set an all-time record for free throws attempted and free throws made. Look at the great position he gets on Jamal Robinson inside, and then even though he's got three Virginia guys coming around him, they can do nothing more than foul. Dan Stackhouse has attempted 21 foul shots in this tournament. That's number 22, and he's got five points. Tar Heels trailing by one. You shoot the ball as well as he does from the free throw line and you get there at least ten times a game, you're going to score an awful lot of points. The 
Virginia's got to attack the North Carolina defense. When they trap, they've got to get the ball to shooting position. Parker faking, driving, dishing. Barnes had it blocked from behind and out of bounds on the shot clock at eight seconds. Friends, stay tuned at halftime for the Volkswagen ACC Women's Report. Watch Eric Montross stop Parker, then turn quickly, get those big arms up in the air. That's a tremendous defensive play. Seven on the shot clock. Parker, four, three, and a steal. Belts all the way. be the death of the University of Virginia. Jeff Jones knows that his team has to get down the court and quickly establish themselves defensively. Burrow kicks it out to Dean. Harrell will put it up and hit it. How's the top shot? Ah, yes. 19-18 Cavs. Donna Williams did a nice job defensively there. Dean just made, as he has done this entire tournament, just made a tremendous shot. Dean is so strong in the upper body that he can really get the ball up in, in tough situations. Substitutions. Reese, McGinnis, Calabria for the Tar Heels. Robinson is out. And Williford back in for Virginia. It's Derek Phelps taking a seat along with Donald Williams. And Phelps has done pretty good work already in this basketball game. That last steal makes him the all-time North Carolina steal leaders. Passing steel leader, passing George Lynch. Cavs 19, Tar Heels 18. Boy, Calabria was a big factor in the game yesterday with his three-point shooting. Stackhouse up and in again. I don't think that Virginia has anybody who can defend him. I just don't have a defensive answer for that. Well, particularly with this lineup, because you either have to guard Stackhouse in the man-to-man -man with Yuri Barnes or with Junior Burrow, and they're just not quick enough to stay with him more than five, six feet from the basket. And McGinnis got him going by. I think it's going to be very important for both Yuri Barnes and Junior Burrow to make themselves available when Dean penetrates into the lane like that. We will be back after this word from our good friends at Bud Light. Defenders, Tar Heels have ever had out front. You know, I was thinking about Derek Phelps. He did not have the chance to participate in the championship game last year because of injury. In '91, when the Tar Heels won it, he was a backup to King Rice. He'd really like to grab that championship in his final chance. Oh, I don't think there's any question about that. And the thing about Phelps yesterday is Randolph Childress just used him and used him almost the entire game, scored 31 points, but didn't get anything down the stretch. Childress didn't. Stackhouse. And oh, what a tremendous play by Burrow. That was two in the back, and Burrow took it right away. But Phelps shut Randolph Childress down over the last three minutes of that game and in the overtime period. So he got helped his team get to this championship game. That was not a good shot right there. Oh, Reese lost it. Now Burrow in the middle of the Parker. I think Parker was afraid of an over and back violation, which is why he stopped. And Williford, after clanging one, comes back to drain the three. Well, as we said, Virginia's coming out here. They feel confident that they've gotten a bid to the NCAA tournament already secured. They really have nothing to lose. They can afford to play very loose. No, no, no. Barnes is going to get called for the foul, and so I think we might see Virginia maybe taking some chances. I don't know that it's necessarily coach-approved chances, but the players will be taking some chances, doing some things that maybe they wouldn't normally do. May make for a very entertaining afternoon of basketball. Once again, as Barnes gets called for that foul, you can see how close to the basket Montross was when he yeah. caught the ball. You just can't let him in there. Much easier to say, however, than to do. <laughs> At his size, he can pretty much go where he wants to. Tar Heels trailing by two. Ten and a half to go in the first half. You see the three-point numbers. Virginia has already hit five. That's as many as they've hit in the entire tournament coming into this game. McGinnis. McGinnis had a heck of a ball game when Phelps missed the second Virginia game in Chapel Hill. Third tie. We've had seven lead changes in the game. 
And this is one of the keys to the basketball game right here. Can North Carolina control Harold Dean out on the point? And then if they can do that, can they control this kid? Willard able to keep the dribble alive. 13 on the shot clock. And he just kicks it right into press row. Never really controlled the basketball well. Lost the dribble a couple of times. Five turnovers now for Virginia. He was matched up with Salvadori. He wanted to take him to the basket. Good idea. Not very good execution, however, for Virginia. And they're back to the zone. Oh, my. What a move. And Alexander came back and swatted it away. Dean lost the dribble. Out of bounds to Carolina. two great plays right here. Watch this step that Stackhouse makes. Catches the ball in there, turns with the fake. How quick can you be? But Alexander recovers. And that Dean just dribbles the ball off his foot. You have to credit McGinnis with a good defensive play. He made Dean stop and turn around. And Rasheed Wallace off the bench. Ready for his first action. And a big cheer from the Carolina faithful. Now we've got a foul called on Chris Alexander trying to hold off Salvadori. And that's what the official said. He was holding off on Salvador. Now Wallace is in. Stackhouse goes to the bench. Well, maybe one of those little lulls for the Cavaliers. They haven't scored in a couple of minutes. Carolina looking to take the lead. Virginia has relied on its defense the entire year, and when they're in those offensive lulls, they, their defense has to get them through. Wallace really banging on Alexander inside. Boy, Donald Williams getting tuned up for the NCAAs. It's another three. Last Virginia points were at 10 minutes and 58 seconds of this half, so they've gone two minutes now without scoring. Turned the ball over a couple of times in succession. Williford gets his own miss. What a Give tremendous him. play by Jason Williford. The ball will belong to Virginia. Virginia really battling on the offensive boards, but as we mentioned, that's something they do very effectively anyway, and this may be a counterweight to that Cavalier crashing of the boards. the boot. So that was a busted play all the way around. Virginia just didn't execute the inbounds play very well. They ran a screen out on the top, forced to switch. Burrow was really mismatched inside against McGinnis. Wallace and Montross were both out of the picture. But a bad pass by Jamal Robinson. Cavaliers have already turned it over seven times, Dan. Three times in a row they've turned the ball over. Calaya Bria. Carolina lead is seven. Parker for three. No. Alexander back up and over Wallace. 27 24. Montross setting up housekeeping within two feet of the basket again. Calabria missing the three. Wallace off balance. This is Montross again banging at the basketball. And look at the quick hands of Donald Williams. Three. Boy, Carolina getting their fair share of offensive rebounds in the last few minutes. Virginia back into the man-to-man. -man. Remember, Burrow has two personal fouls. And he's matched up with Montrose. Calabria penetrates. Nowhere to go with that pass. Virginia really forced to go back to the man-to-man -man defense. When Donald Williams is going to start lighting it up from the perimeter, they got to get Cornell Parker out guarding it. And Parker will shoot. Lenny Wirtz, one of the three officials today, along with Frank Scagliata and Larry Rose, and for Lenny, working his 11th championship game today. He first worked at ACC Championship in 1965. He told me that this was his 25th ACC tournament. 
One of the all-timers. He is the only man to officiate an ACC final in four different decades. Parker was seven. He probably refereed that NCAA championship game that Dean Smith played in. <laughs> played it. <laughs> We'll ask him during the next break. <laughs> Free throw by Cornell and the rebound to Derek Phelps. Who are we going to ask, Dean or Lenny? We're going to ask, well, Lenny, I think. He'll be closer to us. And there's Alexander, picks up the foul. Derek Phelps just doing a great job penetrating into the lane. That was a transition play. Virginia wasn't set defensively, so the big guy picks up the foul, guarding the little guy. 7 away left in Championship Sunday for Charlotte. First half. My dad's a doctor, and you have to be real smart to be a doctor. Well, my dad fixes cars, and he's a lot smarter than your dad, because a doctor only has two models to fix men and women, and they never change. My dad has to know how to fix hundreds of car models, and they change every year. Well, my dad helps your dad keep your dad's car running right, and that's his door. CarQuest, preferred by professional automotive technicians. We have to you know how fast your business is changing. In the market. But do you know which airline is changing faster than any other? Building. Did not play there in action today against Illinois. I guess the college basketball season should end that way because it certainly has been that way the entire season. And once again, continuing a rather recent trend of the ACC, Dan, the top seed doesn't make it to the championship game. Carolina spreading the court now. We try to give Phelps some room to operate on Harold Dean, and that's why. Jeff Jones not particularly happy with that call. Feels like Derek Phelps may have pushed off getting to the basket. For Harold Dean, it's going to be extremely important that he move his feet and prevent that penetration because if Phelps forces Virginia to help out against him, that leaves... Montross, Wallace, Stackhouse, whoever might be in the game for North Carolina, it leaves them with some opportunities inside. Eric Phelps picking up his sixth point. He did not play in the game against Virginia in Chapel Hill out with a knee injury. Had 10 points and five assists when the teams met in Charlottesville. That one won by the Cavaliers, 81-77. Of course, the best work Derek Phelps did at the free throw line yesterday was when he missed. Indeed. Well, they opened the door. Tar Heels via Dante Calabria tied the game and then won it in overtime against the Deeks. Here come the Carolina Traps and Chris Havlicek in the ballgame now for Virginia. See, Virginia beats the Traps, but they're still out by half court. Boy, that is a tough, tough shot. Williams and Montrose just smothering Dean's look at the basket. And now Donald clutching and missing. Away from Havlicek, he was going to run down the ball. And over the goal, out of bounds. And Boyd Robinson and Wallace with a little shoving contest underneath. Two of the more enthusiastic freshmen in this tournament. Yes. Watching Wallace and uh, Robinson play reminds me of the old Vince Lombardi line. He said, if you want heart fired with enthusiasm, you'll be fired with enthusiasm. <laughs> And yeah, boy, these kids have got enthusiasm. Dean, three. Yes. He had time to set himself up. His fifth three-pointer of the championship tournament. Good movement without the ball and good screening action inside. There's Montross. Again, way under the basket. Rasheed Wallace can't control that one. Virginia with it and changes. Cornell Parker coming into the game. And for the Tar Heels, Stackhouse is back along with Calabria. Cheryl Dean, nobody's guarding him. <laughs> There's nobody guarding Harold Dean. Phelps was all the way on the other side of the court, just couldn't get through the screen. Nice job by Dean to recognize where the open spot on the court was located to go to it. Foul on Stackhouse. Gary's first. That's not a bad foul. You put tremendous pressure on Virginia. You get a foul that time, but you don't know what that leads to later on in the basketball game when maybe North Carolina's depth begins to take its toll. Williford coming in for Robinson. 
Jeff Jones having a little chat with Jamal Robinson on the Virginia bench. Oh, Montross, let's see who that fouls on. It's called against Wilson. Montross and Wilson just laying the elbows on one another, and Wilson was the guy who got caught. That's eight turnovers now for Virginia. Talked about scoring drafts. The last North Carolina basket occurred at eight minutes and 28 seconds. They have had two free throws, but they haven't had a basket in the last three minutes. Toward the conclusion of our telecast, we'll be announcing the players of the game, brought to you by Nations Bank. When these two teams get together, you expect physical play, and certainly that's what we've seen so far. Phelps comes out of there with it. Looked like Wilson was going to grab the rebound. Now, Wilson was so busy pushing off inside against Rasheed Wallace, he could only get one hand on the ball. As I said, we're going to see physical play. Phelps with daylight. doing an excellent job getting some baskets in transition transition and doing a great job on the offensive boards that's probably the difference in this first half is North Carolina's ability to score on second chance opportunities this is a tough offensive lineup in the game right at the moment for Virginia the only guy who's really an outside threat is Dean shot clock melting Eric Montross. He came out and doubled against Dean and just enveloped the young man and Sean Wilson. The guy who Montross is guarding did not make himself available for Harold Dean. Montross does a great job stepping out on those screens and if you're the guy Montross is guarding and he leaves you, you got to go someplace, make yourself available. Now it looks like Montross is going to get the yep. First one on Kevin. You know, when you're Harold Dean, 6'1", about 165, 170 pounds, and Montrose... This we're talking about with Montrose. Montrose just leaves Wilson, and Wilson just stands there. Wilson's got to go someplace. He allows Calabria to cover him up. He's got to go and get in position to help Harold Dean. Alexander, Virginia line Barnes got it back, missed it. Alexander inside. He's just takes over. <laughs> He's the big kid out there, all right. McGinnis. Another Salvadori. offensive rebound. And another. Oh. And a foul. And that foul's on Harold Dean. His second. <laughs> Gary Stackhouse will step up to the free throw line. Virginia may have gone into this game saying they're going to be loose. They have nothing to lose. That didn't look like a real loose coach over there having that discussion with Chris Alvisander. <laughs> Junior Burrow is on the bench with his two personal fouls, and Jeff Jones desperately needs to get some play out of Alexander and Sean Wilson, particularly on the boards. And North Carolina just kicking Virginia all over the ballpark on the offensive boards at the moment. Averaging 12.3 per game in a sensational freshman year. Double figures in 18 of his last 24 games. He has just improved so much as the season has progressed. And that's a scary thought because he was pretty good to start yeah, with. Yeah, exactly. Tar Heels 32, Virginia 28. We'll be back after these words. Announcing the lowest lease payment on Lincoln Luxury in years. A special limited time price of just $3.99 a month on Lincoln Town Car. Discover Town Car's uncompromised comfort. It's smooth rear-wheel drive, sophisticated V8 power, luxurious six-passenger interior, and enormous luggage capacity. All for a lease payment normally associated with lesser cars. Lincoln Town Car, now just $3.99 a month. What a luxury car and a luxury lease should be. Take a good look at your nearest Lincoln dealer today. Thank you. 
It's where the Panthers have brought home three state titles and where each May brings a new spring festival queen. Yet Abbeville, South Carolina is also a major financial center because it's served by Nations Bank, giving Canfield Dairy the same resources as any national corporation, providing the Thompsons on Turner Street the investments they'd find on Wall Street, and making sure folks don't have to take a back seat to anyone. In Abbeville and 1,900 other communities throughout our nation. They test car batteries here. They test pickup trucks here. And when they test yard machines, they go here. These are the missed field goals, and you can see many more misses on the inside. You talk about North Carolina's size inside. Generally, you think about it in terms of how North Carolina can pound the ball in inside on offense. But on defense, it's a very intimidating presence. Cavs have hit 6 of 10 from 3-point range, 4 of 11 from 2-point range. And now with Harold Dean out of the basketball game, Cornell Parker going to have to handle the ball. And Wallace Williford's comes. alone in the corner if they can find him. It's the three. That's a big basket. That is the classic way to defeat North Carolina, to beat the trap, find the guy who's open, and drill that three-point shot. It's almost a must. Wallace unable to complete that play as Parker intervened. And Wallace on his backside complaining to the officials, and that's something that he has a propensity to do. Carolina ball. Now, there's a lot of contact down here, but I think it's a pretty good no call. As Parker goes up, knocks the ball away, he and Wallace get tangled up and fall down. Now, watch Wallace. He doesn't get up and go down the court. He starts talking to the officials. The young man's going to learn someday that you're not going to catch any breaks if every time something happens, you yell at the officials. Not saying the officials are always right, but it's always right to keep your mouth shut. Wallace. Now Stackhouse. Four thirty-one Tar Heels. Calabria gets called for the bump. First foul on Dante, and his name, no doubt, will be etched in the Carolina record books after that layup to tie the game yesterday. Metro Championship, and that's a final. Louisville defeating Southern Mississippi. Here we and go again. There's the press. <laughs> Compete no wow. mistake. Boy, Danny Nee, what a job he's done this year. Providence and Georgetown, they're two surprise teams in that Big East championship. Williford airs it, and the rebound to Wallace. Oh, boy, did you see how quick Stan has come up the court? He's got another gear the other folks don't have. Wow. He just explodes up the basketball court. He's in the middle of that pack there. Look him get out on the wing. And Derek Phelps, that's what you want your point guard to do is pitch the ball ahead aggressively. Parker's going to pick up the foul. For Virginia, if they're going to shoot the ball quickly, particularly from three-point range, as Jason Williford just did, the ball better go in the basket because that really sets up the North Carolina transition game. Stack out, tying his 13th first half point. Mott draws the foul, and look at that little chug. And that uh, sparked the temper of Yuri Barnes. Boy, it's a, you know going in it's going to be a physical game. And these guys, referees, Rose, and Wirtz, and Skagliata, they got their hands full. You know that. Well, they got their hands full, but there are three really good basketball officials. You want them to play. You don't want to toot the whistle every two seconds, but, you know, by the same token, you got to keep things under control. Well, this is going to be interesting what call we have here. The foul was on Montross coming over the back of Yuri Barnes. We'll have to see if there's any technical fouls or anything called. Montross with his first foul. That's nice officiating right there, getting in before anything happens. Right. Now we have a technical foul. Eric is his belief. Now, I didn't see the signal for the technical, but the officials were just over there. 
Now, Montross, if that's a technical on Montross, and that's just what they announced, you can see him tell Lenny Wirtz, on me, the personal is on Montross, the technical counts the same as the personal foul, so Montross, with a couple of fouls, two-for-one situation there. Now, Yuri Barnes was going to the line. That was a one-and-one -one opportunity. He missed it. And now Jamal Robinson will go to the line to shoot the two free throws for the technical. So Virginia missing the opportunity for two points as Barnes misses the front end of the one-and-one. One. Robinson, a 71% foul shooter. Hits the first, and now he will get another short. Virginia only scores one of the four they had the opportunity to get. Now they will get the ball out of bounds. So that may actually work to the advantage of North Carolina. Looks like they made the big guy mad. And you better score as many points as you can in that situation. Virginia only gets one of the possible four. Robinson. Oh, what a move! He scores again. Nine for Robinson. The Cavaliers within two. Look how quickly Phelps gets the ball up the court. has been making exciting plays like this in the entire tournament. Slices in between Williams and Wallace and then leans in for the basket. Now Phelps gets the ball up quickly, gets it to Rasheed Wallace before Virginia can set the defense. North Carolina is on the attack constantly. You can never let up. Pretty good first half, huh? Indeed. Oh, yeah. Here they come. They're after Parker. Williford. 15 on the shot clock. Now Jamal. And Phelps talking to him. Parker better be careful about going down in there. Shot clock at two. Great screen. Stackhouse clearing. Wallace is alone. And what a soft touch to put it in. Carolina by six. This is a key stretch of the basket. Ball game for Virginia. That's North Carolina's biggest lead, and that technical foul call really seems to have upped the intensity by North Carolina. Robinson, nowhere to go. Into the hands of Wallace. Carolina running with Williams. Spots up. Won't take it to the trailing Salvadori. Tipped by Stackhouse. Under a minute to go in the hand. Dean's not in the basketball game. This is a tremendous pressure situation for Jamal Robinson and Cornell Parker to try to handle the ball because North Carolina is all over it defensively. And Wallace gets a hand on it. Stackhouse steals it. Hold it. We got a foul on Wallace. His second. That's a good call. Wallace ran right through Yuri Barnes. Yuri Barnes went to the basketball. And something the coaches will tell you, don't stand and wait for the ball to get to you. You go to the basketball. And by going to the basketball, Wallace to run through him. And again, there's that reaction. Can't do that every time, Rashid. You gotta save it. Yuri Barnes missed the front end of the one and one a moment ago. He's back at the line with another one and the bonus. A 59% foul shooter. point of the game. There are 39.2 seconds left in the first half. Eric Montross and Rasheed Wallace comparing notes over there. First Havlicek will check in for Virginia. Barnes makes this free throw. And Virginia is trailing now by four at 40-36. Good check it. Chuck Wilson is the man who's checking in. The game. And Alexander goes out. Back the last 39.2. That's an interesting substitution with 39.2 and Montross with two fouls for the half, that personal and the technical. You run the risk of getting Montross that third personal foul. I guess, however, that Dean Smith feels there's not really much possibility on the offensive end, but he could get called for coming over the back, so Montross has to be very careful that he doesn't pick up a silly third foul. 
The shot clock now at 18 as the game clock was at 21. Phelps inside to Montrose. The hook. That's why he's in the ball. Virginia's got time. Parker kicks it to Willow. himself set up Parker runs over him that's a huge play because that ball went in the basket and that was a three instead of trailing by three oh and it's going to be it has the potential to be an even bigger turnaround because Parker had released the ball by the time contact occurred so it's not a player control Montrose is going to get two shots he misses the first one it's 42-36 right now with another throw to come from Montrose. But it's a six-point game right now, and it's only his defensive play that prevented it from being a three-point game. Struggling at the line. Virginia hasn't had a field goal in the last two minutes and 21 seconds. Eric missed them both. Tipped. Barnes has got it, and that will be the end of the half. 41st ACC Championship reaches the intermission. Jeff Jones and the Cavaliers head to the locker room trailing North Carolina 42 to 36. Paul Cameron will be joining us at halftime. Championship Sunday unfolding from the Charlotte Coliseum. The Tar Heels lead the Cavaliers by six. Today's ACC action is brought to you by Pizza Hut. North Carolina bidding for its 13th, an unprecedented number in ACC championship annals as they lead Virginia here at the half. Welcome back, everybody. Bob Rathman along with Dan Bonner. And as we take a look at our U.S. Air halftime statistics, you'll see the Cavaliers are shooting 46-2. And, Dan, we've talked earlier about some of the droughts that they might have. The three-pointer has really kept them in this game. The three-pointer has kept them in the game, but North Carolina is stomping all over them inside. North Carolina doing a great job getting easy baskets in transitions off, off those 12 Virginia turnovers and following up second chance opportunities. Points inside all North Carolina. The key play of the first half we felt like it was this foul coming up on Eric Montross. Stackhouse will miss the free throw right here. Eric Montross comes over the back of Yuri Barnes. There's the foul on Montross. Now, I don't know what went on. It's possible that that elbow by Montross resulted in the technical foul. And it may not have been, you know, when you have contact that occurs during a dead ball, it is a technical foul. Now, Dean Smith is not claiming that Eric Montross should have a technical. He wants a technical foul called against one of the Virginia players, either Cornell Parker or Yuri Barnes, for a taunting technical foul. But it's possible the whistle blew because Montross was over the back of Barnes, so that makes the ball dead. Then when Montross goes ahead and elbows, then that's a dead ball foul. That's a technical. Okay, and it really fired up the Tar Heels in intensity. I'm sure they'll carry into the second half. We'll be back with that second half after these words. Game and Lenny wouldn't answer, but he did tell us that uh, President Washington did call to offer his congratulations on a fine job. <laughs> Virginia with it. Williford up top now to Burrow, and the Cavaliers trailing 42 36 as the second half gets underway. Get Dean penetrates, dishes, Burrow blocked by Wallace and a foul. Third on Wallace. Freshman Dan Bonner in name only, what we've seen this weekend. <laughs> you can see what the freshmen on each of each side have done in the first half. Look at that. 18 of the 42 by North Carolina scored by freshman. 16 of Virginia's 36. Rasheed Wallace gets that personal foul. Jerry Stackhouse, he's got 12. Wallace has four. Burrow, 66% foul shooter missing. McGinnis had two for North Carolina for their 18. Dan, you talked about the rebounding domination of the Tar Heels. That's been the story through the tournament. They have rebounded Florida State by 12. Wake yesterday by 22. And 
another one. Or Rashid. One of those are shots that Virginia really would like to have because they're, it's hard enough scoring against North Carolina with the guys guarding you. When you're not guarded, you really like to be able to put it in the basket. Throw the ball to the guy inside and stand there. And Reese passed it, cut to the basket. Usually those big guys will give it back to you. But Virginia needs to score consistently. North Carolina is going to get its points. Virginia's got to answer. And I would think, Dan, that Virginia has got to make a, a mark offensively here in the next few minutes because uh, the Tar Heels are starting to stretch this thing out. Absolutely. Virginia cannot afford to play from far behind against North Carolina. Jerry Barnes laying it in. He's got four. 44 38. That baby just crawled in there. Derek <laughs> Phelps almost came up with a very fine defensive play. But that ball's going to die of exhaustion. It's way to the net. You know, I think we'll see North Carolina try to pound that ball inside at the start of the second half. There they go again on the offensive boards. They have just been all over it today. Ah! Wallace. Push on Junior, that's number three. Absolutely relentless as Carolina on the backboards. Rasheed Wallace not only six feet 11 with those long arms, but he's stronger than he looks. It's hard to look real big when you're out there next to Montrose, but he really gets up and gets up quickly. A reminder, friends, the announcers for this game selected and compensated by Raycom and Jefferson Pilot Sports, and the use of this broadcast without their express permission is prohibited. North Carolina, however, not doing a very good job on the free throw line. Tar Heels in the first half were 5 of 11, and now 5 of 12 after the first Wallace miss. They've got a 7-point lead. Get up! 6-point lead, but they've missed now 8 free throws. And yet another offensive rebound. Good catch. Short. Out of bounds, and Virginia gets it. Seems like if people come out of it, come out of uh, from underneath with the ball, it's North Carolina. Virginia, sure, very thankful to have that ball bounce off one of the Tar Heels and go out of bounds. There's North Carolina. It seems like they've gotten those 14 in this half. <laughs> Harold Dean methodically over midcourt against Derek Phelps. Harold takes it. Hits it. Boy, do they need that three. Well, that's a huge basket by Harold. Now Virginia's got to get some defensive stops. There's a foul inside on Barnes. And again, Montross had Barnes just pinned under the basket. Montross does such a great job running down the basketball court. You know, for such a big guy, he runs the court very well. He gets down, sets himself up inside, turns around, and the ball's right there. Barnes trying to push him out, and he got caught. Well, Derek Phelps just made a smart play. If he catches that ball in the front court, stumbles into the back court, it's over and back. But that's what you want your senior point guard to do is make great decisions. Wallace. Oh, my. Six points for Rashid. Carolina 46-41. As North Carolina looks ahead to the NCAA tournament, there aren't too many teams that are going to be able to effectively defend that one-two inside punch. And for Virginia... It's hard to defend that guy. I was just going to say. And he's a Robinson goes up the court parking at Brian Reese. They're both from New York. Possibly know one another from the playground days. That's a nice move by Barnes. And Robinson comes away with it. Harold Dean, another three, this time from the right side. And Robinson fouls Wallace. Dean really didn't get his feet set under him that time. Jamal. Now, Yuri Barnes is just having a real tough time being stronger than Montrose, playing the strength game with Montrose. At that time, he tried to use a little quickness, and he, he did it successfully. Can't do the same thing against a guy like Montrose every time down, though, because he's going to react to it. And that time, <laughs> the ball went right past as they were trying to hold each other off. Nine turnovers. So they did hold each other off. Look at Montross get position inside. Barnes trying to get thrust in front. 
And I think that's a situation where Montross expected more pressure in the rear, didn't get it, and as a result, he stumbled out of bounds. Of course, that occurred right over in front of Dean, and he thought that was a foul. Cavaliers can get within one. Hold it. Foul on Montross. Well, the foul's starting to add up inside. Montross with three personal fouls, and Rashid Wallace has two personal fouls. No, he's also got three, so Montross and Wallace both with three personal fouls. Virginia's staying in the game from the three-point line, and the question for Jeff Jones' crew is, can they keep that up? Absolutely. Is it fool's gold? They've earned those shots, but... You're right, Dan. Can they keep it going? They're going to have to because they just can't get a rebound. North Carolina in the zone defense, and that's a big, active zone. Oh, oh my goodness! Takes it, it in! in. <laughs> Who is that, that guy? guy? Jamal Robinson. What a weekend. <laughs> oh, you can't leave him alone. Everybody ran away from him. Hot as that guy is, somebody ought to guard him. Cornell Parker works the right side. Let's see if Parker tries to take Wallace. He's asking for a clear out. Now Parker gets it into Barnes. And Chris Alexander is there. There's a hand underneath. By Montrose. He just can't get up there. And a hell ball on the block. Boy, that was great positioning by Montrose. Didn't budge. Knew he had the backboard as an extra defender. Look, there's Montrose standing like a stone wall. He never moved. As you watch it, we'll be back after this word from our good friends at Budweiser. Up and down, up and down, but can't get it up through the big guy. An extremely intelligent play by Eric Montross. And if you're going to win championships, you need your seniors to make smart plays. Stackhouse. And he's fouled. He's fouled by Jamal Robinson. Stackhouse just so quick. The third foul, Dan, on Jamal. He joins Burrow in that category for Virginia. Wallace and Montross each have three for the Tar Heels, and now Jason Williford will come in the game, and, and foul, Robinson goes out. Foul problems have really hurt Virginia. Now Robinson goes out. Uh, Burrow is out with three personal fouls. So Virginia, because of foul problems, really losing a lot of their offensive firepower. With this lineup that they have in the game right now, I think you can expect them to struggle for points, and there's another foul. Third on Chris Alexander. North Carolina just relentless getting the ball inbounds. Or, in, or inside. They're not necessarily relentless getting inbounds. That's what they have to do. But punching it inside, you can understand why. If you had Wallace and Montrose, you'd throw them the ball too. Helps. Stackhouse. Short that time. Williford claims it. Good defense by Williford. He stayed right with him, and that's something not very many Cavaliers have been able to do today. And Dan Virginia could take the lead with a basket here. And Dean, the man. What a tournament Harold Dean has had. First time the Cavs have led since the 10-58 mark of the first half when it was 22-20. Pretty gutsy performance by the Cavs. There's a guy we haven't heard from for a while, Donald Williams, and Harold Dean grabs the basketball. He's going to get called for the foul. Third on Dean. Dean's got three runs. Well, now watch you here as Williams gets inside, pitches the ball, excellent defense. Dean gets in there, thought he had the ball, but he's ruled that he got Stackhouse on the wrist as well. Stackhouse really drawing a lot of fouls in there. We don't have any stat on that, but I wonder how many of those Virginia fouls have been caused by Stackhouse. Jeff McGinnis back in along with Dante Calabria now. Salvadori back in as well. Montross who played 42 minutes yesterday, playing the Iron Man role again today. We mentioned the Virginia dry spells. Well, Carolina's hit one. They have scored just about four minutes. Zone defense. Oh, and Junior Burrow just picks up a silly foul. That's foul number four. 
And Jeff Jones is really upset. That was an oops. I didn't mean to foul, but Burrow just got in a bad position. Smart play by Calabria to get in front of it. Junior's out. Alexander's in. Stay tuned for the Nations Bank Players of the Game Award. Nations Bank will contribute $1,000 to the ACC Postgraduate Scholarship Program. Since 1971, contributions to the program have helped fund postgraduate educational opportunities for over 50 deserving student athletes. And this is a place where North Carolina has struggled mightily today at the free throw line. They missed their last five prior to that. Carolina now 6 of 14 from the free throw line. There's Burrow on your right with four. Jamal Robinson with three personal fouls. Dante Calabria's first two points of the game. Tar Heels back on top by one, 48-47. And with all the people North Carolina can throw at you, and as tough as they make it on you playing defensively, it's not surprising that the fouls would pile up. He hits it. Gary Barnes with six. And the Cavaliers, now their turn to take the lead. And Virginia drops back into the zone. Quickly into Montross with some quick hands by Alexander. And Virginia's got the ball. Look to see Donald Williams back in the game relatively soon against this Virginia zone. Williams got a couple of baskets against the zone, drove Virginia out of the zone in the first half. Cornell Parker's done a tremendous defensive job against Williams in the second half in the man-to-man. -man. Without Williams in the game, Virginia goes to the zone. Yuri again. You know, we wondered where Virginia's offense was going to come from with Robinson and Burrow on the bench, and the answer is number 24, Yuri Barnes. Not noted for his perimeter jump shooting, but he's nailed him. He's now his eight points. And the Cavaliers have carved out a three-point lead, 51-48. McGinnis inside, knocked away by Barnes, and a steal for Williford. Can they complete it? No, well, <laughs> out it goes to McGinnis. He'll fire and hit. Good hustle both ways. Alexander just not strong enough in the upper body to hang on to that basketball. Parker, Barnes, Williford, loose in the lane, Stackhouse to claim it. Carolina moves it quickly, McGinnis. Oh, nice job by McGinnis. Montross. Chris Alexander with his fourth foul. And what created that foul opportunity was the fact that Eric Montross gets up the court and gets himself in position inside. And now Jeff Jones, Burrow was four, Alexander was four, Sean Wilson's got to come in the basketball game and play some very, very key minutes for Virginia. It is becoming a war of attrition for the Cavaliers. And that's a war that North Carol in which North Carolina holds all the advantages. 12-24 to play. And Montross, who struggled at the line today, comes back to hit this one. Robin, you're talking about a war of attrition. North Carolina's got four guys at the scorer's table ready to come in. Phelps, Reese, and Williams, and Wallace will come in for Montross. Merrick hits his free throw. But how many teams in the country can put four guys in the ballgame like that at one time? They come at you in wave. Coming off the bench. Parker jumps in to claim it. Tie game at 51. See if Virginia stays in the zone defense with Williams in the game. Jamal Robinson. Montross encouraged him to go outside. There we what go. a pass. Sean Wilson, no. And Reese the board. What a pass. What a great decision by Montross to leave Wilson and get to Robinson to force that pass. Reese penetrates. Mr. Excitement. <laughs> tough pass, tough pass, great catch. Parker tried to muscle it up. He was looking for the foul in there again. A nice job by Montross to not commit the foul. Williams is spotted out. Shortwood. And Parker with another rebound. Here it comes. Don't know that you want to get in a racehorse kind of game with North Carolina. Jeff Jones is going to put Harold Dean back in the ball game. Barnes. Great check. 
The two towers in there now. Montross and Salvadori choked that one off. We've got a timeout on the floor. 11-12 left in the championship game, and nothing's been decided. Virginia's not going to turn it over. That's harder. Virginia with 16 shot opportunities. North Carolina with only 10. That's because Virginia has already committed eight fouls. And Virginia's going to run out of guys eventually. But looking to take the lead on this possession. Williford. Now the Tar Heels can take the advantage. Both teams in the zone. Virginia stays in the zone. North Carolina in the zone after that timeout on the inbounds play. You've got to find Donald Williams in this particular defense. Right now, he's lurking on the far side. Underneath the Wallace! My goodness! Of course, you can always find Rasheed Wallace. Boy, that happened so quickly. I think that's one of the keys with Wallace. It happened quickly. That young man can get in there. Boy, the quickness that he and Stackhouse possess. The big young Incredible. kids. Carolina back to the man-to-man. -man. I think Williford may be a key guy going down the stretch. He may have some of those open three opportunities. He just missed one. That's a bad place to go with the ball. First turnover, but Parker gets it right back. What a big play. Carolina was off and running. You know, we talked about the turnovers leading to transition baskets, and North Carolina had a four-on-one. But Cornell Parker, noted for his defense, makes a big defensive play right there. Virginia has missed five straight shots. Here comes Donald Williams. That Parker has himself in position. That's clear. You can see North Carolina. you got two guys running free down the court. Parker, very happy with that play. Or else he's stretching out a tight back. I don't know. <laughs> now here's Burrow back in the ball game. He's got four personal fouls. He's got to be very, very careful. Looks for North Carolina to attack him on the defensive end. Around the ring to Dean. Can he get the, his own miss? No, but Burrow can. And now Virginia resets. You see the score and the time. Boy, it's been a dandy. Virginia in the Tar Heels. Burrow taken away by Phelps. Up ahead to Stackhouse. Well, great defense play by Cornell Parker. And look at the D by Phelps. to go. Wilson will take it and hit it. Sean Wilson, who had just one field goal in ACC play, hits his first basket of the tournament. Too long. In the lane, Stackhouse is fouled. That's on Harold Dean. Color at four fouls on Harold. 8.43 left. This ball is going to hit Junior Burrow right in the head. Oh, no, this is the previous play. Stackhouse misses the dunk. Now Phelps very nearly gets the steer. Watch come flying into your picture right there, Cornell Parker. What a play by Cornell Parker. There's eight minutes and 43 seconds left in the game. You can see Virginia's foul trouble. They're in it deep. Jerry Stackhouse missing that opportunity. He hasn't scored in the second half. And North Carolina continues to struggle from the free throw line. They're really giving the Cavaliers life. Eight of 18 from the line. Make that eight of 19, but there's what's keeping North Carolina despite those 11 missed free throws. That's why this game is tied. North Carolina may be missing free throws, but they're just all over the backboard. Wallace inside to Montross. He's got it again. A lot of congestion. Wilson claims it. Dean Smith shaking his head over there. The game very, very physical. Tied at 53 with 8.15 to play. Robinson. Williford. Well, can Yuri Barnes get another one? No. Wilson with the tip and he missed. And just missed. Well, it looks like that one was going to go in for him. 
the Tar Heels with Phelps. Calabria looking inside first. They find Stackhouse. Dante, three-pointer. And I think Parker may have gotten just a piece of that. Now Robinson comes out. Here comes Virginia two on two. Robinson a little fancy, but gets it over to Parker. <laughs> shot clock. Barnes on the cut. Bounce to Parker. Ten on the shot clock. Who's he throwing that to? Labor. Phelps got a hand on that. Knocked it away. It's been a while since anybody scored. Another whistle. Another Virginia foul. Call is against Jerry Barnes, number 24. No, I'm sorry, Wilson. They call it on 52. I thought they signaled Barnes. Second on Sean. Parker out. Alexander in. Wilson is one of the few guys in there who can afford fouls for Virginia. <laughs> He's got a couple left. Chris Alexander is back. He's playing with four. Harold Dean with four. Alexander with four. Burrow out right now. Virginia has fouled ten times in the second half. Carolina only three, so a long time until the Cavaliers get to the line on a common foul. Here's Stackhouse. Well, it's through fouling that Virginia's been holding the fort inside. North Carolina with their tremendous advantage, and they've been utilizing it effectively. Their problem has been conversions from the free throw line. Stackhouse takes care of that. He is three for seven. Those are the first points we've had in a while. We were stuck on 53 there. See, Stackhouse a better free throw shooter than he's shown today. He's got 14 points, and Carolina's got a two-point lead. 7.04 to play with the championship hanging in the balance. It's the Tar Heels by two. North Carolina, big and strong and deep. Virginia's only down two with seven minutes and four seconds left in the game. The last Cavalier basket at 8.58. And you have to wonder if Virginia's going to be able to stand up to the deeper Tar Heels as we go down the stretch. Dean with four personal fouls has to be very careful. Here comes Reese to double. Robinson to Williford. Inside quickly and a good Yuri bucket Barnes. for Yuri Barnes. He's got double figures with ten. Cavaliers when the points were few and far between. Well, they, you need some inside scoring with Burrow in foul trouble. Barnes has stepped up. Wallace, straight look, nails it. How good can that guy be? Dean. Salvadori rebounds. North Carolina running. Calabria is open with Barnes flying. mounting on Virginia's shoulders. This is a big offensive possession for Virginia. Fifteen on the shot clock. Robinson to Dean to Williford at the travel. So the Cavaliers come up shy, 5.47 remaining in the game, and the Tar Heels up 60-55. So Virginia fails on what may have been their biggest offensive possession of the game, and now they're faced with what might be their biggest defensive stand of this basketball game. Half goes on, Dean goes to get Donald Williams off the bench. You can't leave Calabria alone, he just showed you hitting that three his fingertips, but he saves it, and off the leg of Williford out of bounds. Shot clock at 17. The guard play for the Tar Heels, Dan, in that first half, 17 points between Phelps and Williams. Agusa, none points between those two in the second half. Now North Carolina has attacked inside for the most part in the second half, and I think they've really accomplished their purpose. A lot of fouls by Virginia, baskets by North Carolina. The Cavaliers are really in trouble now.
Virginia ball. Wallace last to touch. Jeff Jones telling his troops to calm down. Well, this really is the most crucial part of this game for Virginia. Montross just gets great position inside, and Junior Burrow just cannot afford to play him aggressively. Burrow has four personal fouls. Phelps nearly with Williams completed that steal. Now you might say, well, why do you even have Burrow in the game if he can't play aggressively on the defensive end? Virginia's problem isn't defensively, it's offensively. They've got to get some points, and Burrow is their most effective inside scorer on offense. <laughs> Junior back out to Parker. Dean faking, and that is going to be a foul on Stackhouse. And that's not a bad foul, however. North Carolina can really afford to run at a guy like Harold Dean because if he penetrates past you on the perimeter, he's just driving into Montross and Wallace, and that's only personal foul number four. Virginia, only two for its last ten overall, 0 for 5 for its last three pointers. to Dean. They're really running at Virginia out on the perimeter. That is a big basket by Harold Dean. Keeps Virginia alive. 62-57 with 440 left. Look for North Carolina to continue attacking attack inside. Derek Phelps recognizes the zone. There's Wallace and Stackhouse on the inside and Williams to stretch it out on the perimeter. It's hard to imagine. Oh. Virginia can defend him. There you get a perfect example. Montross just gets that big body down in there on the blocks and tips in the miss. It's a defensive coordinator's nightmare. That North Carolina tandem. Well, with North Carolina playing so well on the offensive end right now, it's incumbent upon Virginia to keep scoring. That was an NBA range three. Misses. Under four minutes to play in the game. Seven-point lead for North Carolina. Junior Burrow, way off the mark, but Barnes is there to put it in. Another big basket by Yuri Barnes. 12 for the game, 10 in the second hand. Five-point Carolina lead. Virginia has found a way to prevent North Carolina from scoring on the first shot, but the offensive rebounds have just killed the Cavaliers. Derek Phelps and out of bounds. Virginia will have it with 3.31 to play. Time out on the floor. We'll be back after this word from our good friends at Budweiser. I remind you that only authorized personnel. in the ball game. Now, North Carolina with the turnover. They were operating extremely effectively on the offensive end. This is an opportunity for Virginia. Stackhouse going to match up with Harold Dean. Three-pointer would really make this an interesting final three minutes. And a man for North Carolina. Shot clock at 20. second mark right now. Dean penetrates, hold it. We've got a foul, says Larry Rose, and a push on Stackhouse. That is a tough matchup for Harold Dean. Much like what Dean's problem was yesterday, trying to operate against Grant Hill. Stackhouse quick enough to stay with him, big enough to bother the jump shot inside, but here Dean, just a little bit quicker, is going to get the ball, get past, and watch as Jerry Stackhouse puts his hands on him as he drives into the lane, and that's what the foul call was for. Carolina now in his zone. Just under three minutes remaining in the game. Tar Heels by five. Robinson on the deck. Goes up, post the back, but a tip. No, wouldn't go to Parker. The foul on Virginia. Really, really upset. Felt like Jamal Robinson got fouled on that trip to the basket. Jeff Jones knows what a close thing that was. Robinson's bucket. Robinson's shot nearly goes in the basket. Watch Robinson here. Gets in, leans in between Montross. That's a pretty good no call. Parker almost goes in. So close, and then Yuri Barnes gets the foul, reaching over the back. Boy, a nice tip. Nice drive and good defense. And Montross, who has struggled at the line, puts it in, so it's points that you don't get 
points the opposition does get. Montross, three of eight now from the free throw line. And gets that one to go. Two big free throws. Seven point Carolina lead. Eric with a dozen. Virginia needs a three. And Dean supplies it from NBA range. Virginia timeout. His third three pointer, and the Cavaliers still have life. 2.27 to play. Carolina 66 and Virginia 62 will return after these messages from the Atlantic Coast Conference. And that big three by that young man has kept Virginia in this game. Well, it's defense that has kept the Cavaliers in games all season long. No different today. And now they've got to turn this ball game over to their defense. They're going to need a defensive stop. You cannot trade baskets with North Carolina right now. You've got to stop them, and then you've got to convert. North Carolina is still with only five personal fouls in the second half, so they've got a couple of fouls to give. Or I guess one foul to give specifically. Virginia in the man-to-man. -man. North Carolina going to try to work some clock. Ten on the shot clock, two on the game clock. Nice pass. Montraw stepped out of bounds, flips it back in. did a great job. Not only did he fling it back in, but he threw it way, way up in the air, and he figured that his teammates could go and get it. This is great hustle by Montross. He gets it way up in the air. You figure that the white shirts are going to get that one, but Rasheed Wallace climbs on the back of Jamal Robinson. Well, sort of in a left-handed way, they got the defensive stop they needed. Now can they convert? A minute 40 left. Four-point lead for North Carolina. Robinson. And Williams the Lord. Now Virginia's got to get on him defensively. For the Cavaliers, Phelps with the ball in his hands. Dean can't foul him. Dean's got four fouls. Parker's got a couple. Now you don't want to foul Donald Williams. Might give Montross a belt if you could, but Montross made his last two. Shot clock now at 10. Well, now you don't want to foul. Now you want to play good, tough defense. Ooh, and another back of the steal. Harold Dean to the bucket. He'll shoot two. And Dean is hurt. He down hard on that hip. What a play by Harold Dean. That's four fouls now on Snapchat. What has Harold Dean done in this tournament? The thing about that play, Dan, is that his sense of what was happening, he saw Stackhouse lose the ball, and then Dean just jumps all over. You see Harold Dean go after the ball? Derek Phelps stood there. Derek Phelps did not go after the ball, and that enabled Harold Dean to get at it. Virginia with only two free throws in the second half. They've missed them both, but Harold Dean, with this play, gets his body into Stackhouse. Very effective way to draw the foul and also get it up there with a chance for the three. You can see that he's hurt his hip. 70% foul shooter. Harold with 18. Now there's 54 and a half seconds left in the basketball game. Jason Williford, if Dean makes this, is going to report in for Harold Dean. North Carolina is going to have to shoot the ball again, and the Cavaliers have the decision to make. Do they foul or do they play tough defense and see if they can cause the turnover? If North Carolina runs the shot clock down just about to the end and then converts, then the ball game's probably over. If Virginia can get a defensive stop, then they have the opportunity to tie. Calabria over to Stackhouse. He explodes out on a pass to Williams. Donald That's takes not a good shot. But he hits it. So it's a good shot, but you didn't need the shot at that point in the game. Four point spread again. 40 seconds to play. Parker. Well, you don't have all day to mess around here. You got to get a shot out. And Cornell takes the three and misses it. Rebound tipped out. Virginia ball with 33 seconds left. Here Burrow and Dean will come back. Dean and Burrow back the Cavaliers. Wallace. 68 North Carolina, 64 Virginia. And Dean Smith takes a timeout. 
33 seconds remaining in the championship game, and what a battle it has been. North Carolina unable to put Virginia away. Donald Williams hit that shot, Dan, but you're right. They had a chance to, to really poke that clock some. Well, the ball went in the basket. That young man has had an outstanding basketball game today. He's been such a force on the inside. North Carolina with very good balance. But Montross has really been big, literally, inside. Now Virginia's got to get it up quickly. Robinson picks up his dribble. He takes the leaner and missed it. Long board to the corner, and it's going to be out of bounds to North Carolina. Good defense by North Carolina. They cut off Robinson's penetration and then cut off his passing lanes. I think he was worried about the five-second violation. And Robinson limping also, Danny, in the deck hard, trying to get that basketball. Well, now, his knee. Williford comes in. Mike Powell's going to come in the game. Chris Alexander's in the game. Now, what Jeff Jones is going to do here is Robinson limps out. He's got guys with four personal fouls on the bench. Look for Virginia to foul immediately. And Parker wraps up Donald Williams. Less than a second, ticks off the clock. The story at the free throw line for North Carolina has been 12 of 23, 52% below their substandard uh, seasonal average of 66%. Well, now, even if Williams converts both of these free throws, you still have a two-possession basketball game, but it's a two it's the maximum two possessions. Virginia would have to get two threes in a space of less than 21 seconds, while North Carolina wouldn't score any more at all. And it's not like the Tar Heels wouldn't challenge those threes. North Carolina probably defends the three-point line as well as any team in the country. Donald Williams has scored 11 in a season truncated by injury. He missed nine games. Badly bruised that shoulder against the Cavs in Charlottesville. Buries these two, and it's 70-64. And so it's as hard as it can be for Virginia. Dean trying to draw the foul, misses the three, and that one is claimed by Montross. The Tar Heels and are on their one. way. And Dean just fouled out of the game. Eric Montross embracing with Rasheed Wallace. He threw as soon as he claimed the rebound and released it, put both fists in the air. He knew it was history. Nine seconds left, and the Tar Heels with a six-point lead. And Harold Dean is fouled out of the basketball game. And what a tournament Harold Dean has had. Harold Dean fouling out, as you mentioned, Dan, 19 points today in a sensational tournament, 22 against Maryland, 18 points and nine rebounds against Duke yesterday, and coming back with a strong second half for the Cavs. And what a year, in addition to what a tournament. Virginia, with their play in this tournament, Bob, has assured that their year is not over yet. Donald Williams missing, and now a second opportunity. <laughs> Question about the Carolina substitution. Stackhouse is at the table, but he can't come in right now, says Frank Scagliata. Pete Smith would like to get his reserves in the ball game. And he will at this opportunity. Coming in will be McGinnis and Calabria, Davis and Landry, Reese, Phelps, Williams go out. And Eric Montrose. Fine floor game by Derek Phelps. Great decision making the entire game, but Eric Montross, what a force in the middle. Mike Powell all the way, lays it in. 71-66. McGinnis baseballs it to Pierce Landry. He'll take the shot and hit it at the buzzer. And the North Carolina Tar Heels are the 1994 Atlantic Coast Conference champions. Tar Heels have won the ACC. And 
for head coach Dean Smith, career win number 801. And it is his 12th tournament title. We'll have interviews with Terry Kelly. Carolina wins at 73-66. Stay with us. Nine boards and three blocks, and it seemed like every point and every rebound was crucial to the Tar Heel victory. Harold Dean for UVA with 19 points and two assists. Right now, let's go to my colleague Dan Bonner, who's standing by with Derek Phelps. Thank you very much, Bob. We've got Derek Phelps, the senior point guard for the University of North Carolina. And Derek, first of all, congratulations. A fine tournament and a real solid championship game. Um, thanks. I, I thought we did a great job, you know, controlling tempo and I think the, the freshmen has definitely picked up this game. And definitely Eric Mancho's down low. I think our inside game and tonight, tonight's game did help us. Well, now, one of the things that you expect a senior point guard to do is make good decisions. And I assume that part of those good decisions are finding guys like Wallace down on the inside. Um, when you're in trouble and getting double teamed, just always look down low for Wallace because he's going to be wide open. And if you throw a tough pass, he'll reach up and get it. And I always look for him when I'm in trouble. And he's always there for me. Now, how do you feel about your team right at the moment? You know, a lot of people with great expectations for North Carolina, you seem to outside observers to be playing maybe as well now as you have all year. What's your impression of that? Um, I think we're playing pretty well. I feel that at this time, we, we're supposed to be playing our best basketball. And going into the NCAA tournament, you have to be coming around and know your personnel and also have great expectations. And we're doing a great job doing that. Well, Derek Phelps, congratulations once again. Thank you for being with us. Let's go to the other side of the floor with Bucky Waters. Thank you, Dan. Jerry Stackhouse. For a freshman, uh, you surely didn't play like a yearling, young man. Yeah, I, I came in and tried to establish myself. I mean, I felt good coming in the tournament. I, mean, I felt like I had a pretty good season coming in, and I thought the team had started playing really well toward the end of the season, so it was really easy for me to kind of fit in during this tournament. Specifically against Virginia, what was the big concern of the Tar Heels? Uh, we know that, that, that they play really good defense. I mean, I think we were, like, really close at... Um, uh, the team defense and we just tried to come in and try to run our offense and make sure we got good shots We knew that they were scrappy and they was going after every loose ball So that was a concern of ours and hopefully that, that, that we could try to contain those guys from the outside shooting the threes Rookie a heck of a tournament. Congratulations on the championship. Dan Bonner back to you Thank you very much Bucky. We've got coach Dean Smith Coach, congratulations. A real fine effort by your team in this tournament. I thought it was a great effort by our team and a great comeback, and I felt we were coming back. And uh, I was disappointed uh, only in some things other than the game, but our players I'm very happy with. Eric Montross really performed well inside for you. Big, powerful kid had a great game today. Well, when they're hanging all over him, it's pretty hard. And, uh, I don't say how it's a tough game to officiate. I honestly believe it's unbelievably tough. Thanks very much, Coach. Congratulations. Let's go back to Bob Rathman. Okay, thank you, fellas. And uh, we'll talk more about this one in a moment, the freshman impact and what this means for the NCAA tournament when we continue from the Charlotte Coliseum right after these words. Didn't win this title, and you went on to win the national championship. What's the difference in this team? Well, you know, I think, of course, last year we were missing a very key player in Derek Phelps for the championship game, and uh, this year everybody was really pulling together. I think we had come off of a, a season that we really didn't, we had lost a few too many games for our taste, and we wanted to come out and really prove ourselves. Why didn't you cut the nets down this afternoon? I don't want to, <laughs> well... We didn't because we want to come back and do it. And I think, uh, you know, it's a, it's a realistic idea to come down and, in a couple weeks and be here again. But we've got a ways to go, and uh, this tournament is a great step forward for us. To defend the national championship, you're going to come back here in this building. You're right. There's a lot between now and then. What specific thing do you need to do to get tough enough to come back here and win it again? We need to improve every day on the court and practice and games. Uh, we have to be mentally into it. We just have to grow, continue to grow like we have in the past few weeks. The freshmen, what have they meant to this club in terms of speed, defense? They've done a great job for us. Uh, you know, coming in, it's a tough position for freshmen to be in in a situation like we have, and uh, they've done a remarkable job for us, and, and we just uh, are very proud of them. All right, four straight national championships in the neighborhood. Go get it done. Thank you very much. Bob Rathman, back to you. Okay, thank you, Bucky. 73-66, the Tar Heels win. We'll talk more about the championship and the up-and-coming NCAAs when we continue from Charlotte right after this.